it's Caitlin from Chemistry Creations, and today's video is going to be a little bit different from the last couple ones. Where last time I was doing stuff based on designs I had, I am actually this time going to be doing a bit of an upcycling on this shirt. It's a hand-me-down, so, so yeah. I've gotta be some simple stuff. I'm just altering the neckline and the sleeves. I I gotta get rid of the sharing. It drives me bonkers. Okay, so I'm just gonna be getting rid of that and, and we'll see how it goes. So the first thing I did, as much as I didn't want to, was put the shirt on and then I started marking down where I wanted stuff to go. And then I just cut off the neckline, got rid of the shearing. Shearing is when you use elastic thread for gathering, which makes it stretch. And hence why the neckline suddenly became gaping <laughs> after I removed the sheared neckline. And honestly, the elastic drives me insane. So I decided to do a scoop neck neckline because I thought that'd be pretty. Then I put, pulled the sleeves off. Well, cut the sleeves off. And yeah. Okay, so here's the top that I've cut off the shearing on. And already it feels so much better. Like, oh god, I am way happier in this. Hot damn. Hot damn. Did that thing need to lose the shearing? Because, god... My wrists are still tingling, and so is my neck. Ugh. So yeah, I'm actually going to gather up these sleeves and put like a little cuff on them to go like, take around my mid hip forearm. And then I'm going to put some banding or binding on this to clean it up and keep it from fraying and all that. I'm going to get that hip party started and let's go. Okay, so I forgot to record this, but I cut out some bands. They're going to be cuffs for the arm. And, of course, the interfacing, give it some structure. Okay, so then it's not flapping all over the place. I told you about the importance of interfacing in my corset video. So then we got at the top. I'm going to cut out some bias strips to put on the neckline. So then, you know, it looks pretty and it doesn't fray. All that stuff. The first thing I did was surge up the sleeve edges both to clean them up and because my searcher has a gathering thing. And like the feed dogs move at a different rate than the needle. So that helps. And then I he sewed the cuffs together. And then I had to do a bit more gathering on the his sleeve to get it to actually fit the band. And then I attached the sleeve cuffs. So before I move forward and do the other sleeve, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a tutorial on gathering. So if you never gathered before, know that it's probably going to be the bane of your existence. Because it's just, it's a nightmare. Plain and simple nightmare. But unfortunately, it is a truth of anyone who's had to operate a sewing machine. Gotta do it at some point. You're going to want to throw things at, the, at times, but you gotta do it. So what you do is you do these two lines of basting. The second line is to help it stay straight. And yeah, then you gotta separate the damn threads. You need to be very careful to only pull on one side of the fabric because otherwise you'll lock the stitch and then you can't gather it anymore. And yeah. Then you have to rip it all out and start over, and literally nobody wants that. And then you, once you've got it all pulled tight, you pull it and spread the gathers as evenly as you can across the, the item that you're attaching it to that's not gathered, in this case, the sleeve cuff. And theoretically, it's pretty easy. It's just the actually pulling everything so it's even that's difficult. And yeah, I try to gather as little as possible in my line of work, but it's unavoidable. And when I do gather, it's usually for decoration, but again, unavoidable. I'm not sure if you heard that, but my stomach is going, so I'm going to get this attached and then I'm going to get some food and we'll see if I continue today or tomorrow. So, uh... It's actually been a couple days. I got very busy all of a sudden in the last couple of days. Just life stuff, no biggie. Anyways, we're back. Let's continue. So 
So, something I noticed is that the neckline is a little too wide and doesn't quite sit properly on my body when I'm wearing the shirt. So I'm actually going to put some darts in to help it fit a bit better, which means I need to, you know, put this on and, and pin everything in place so I can mark where the darts are going to be. Which honestly isn't going to be too hard. I just gotta ta -da, inside out. I want to use the back. Yeah, I do. I'm doing this inside out so then I can make the marks and then not have to flip them around and muck around with that. Cause might as well just put the chalk on where it's supposed to go from the get go instead of fiddling around with fiddle farting. Okay, there we go. gonna do something like that get around a little of the neckline you know pin it down all that jazz and i'll be back once this is pinned once i did some rough pinning on the darts i i did have to unstitch it and even it out but then i sewed them down and honestly the top fits a lot better now all right i put the darts in let's stand up real quick let's use the boob view there we go that's looking a lot better Right, don't we think? Yeah. And it looks very nice. Luckily, it doesn't seem to interrupt the pattern too much, which is nice, because then it doesn't look weird. And yeah. So next up, I'm going to be binding the neckline so it doesn't fray or anything like that. When I refer to binding, hang it, that means I'm using a bias strip, which is, for those of you that don't know, a bias, on the fabric is the direct diagonal, 45 degrees from the selvage, which is the, the the finished edge of the fabric, like right here. That is selvage. So we have a 45 degree angle from that, and that is our true bias. And with that, you can make bias tape, which does a little stretch, as opposed to twill tape, which does not, as I mentioned in my corset video. So I'm going to attach this. And then I'm going to iron this out and we'll be done. And I look forward to showing you guys. The advantage to bias tape, especially on curves, is that it stretches. Hence why it's commonly used on curves. In fact, you can usually press it into the curve shape that you're trying to achieve. I didn't do that here because satin is a pain in the behind to press his into just the one fold, much less the extra fold and then the curve. So then I attached it and then folded it over and stitched it down on the outside. It's then, it creates a nice looking neckline and also it prevents fraying because nobody, nobody wants fraying because that means your garment is literally coming undone and then you need to sew it back up all over again, which is tragic and you feel really sad when you do it. God damn it. Find your edges. And the shirt is done. I got the binding down. And I think it looks very good. Give me a second. I will stand up and show you guys the full product. Give me a second. Standing on the chair. This is not my best idea. Give me a sec. I'll just get this up real quick. There you go. That's a little better. Eh, not really. This is... Uh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks really good. I'm going to get off this thing before I spin off and uh, break something. <sighs> there we go, much better. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed, then feel free to leave a like or subscribe. And, and I'll see you next time.